Hello, you're watching Airy TV, and welcome to English News Broadcast. These are the major headlines. 99% of diseases in the central region are controlled. Social service provision institutions in Foro contributing in villages. The global COVID-19 case and vaccination coverage continues to rise. And the United States confirms it will take part in a meeting in Vienna next week. The local news. The Ministry of Health branch in the central region stated that 99% of diseases that have vaccines have been put under control in the region. Speaking to Arena, Mr. Berhadar Aya, representative of Family and Community Health Unit at the branch office, said integrated effort has been exerted in preventing diseases by increasing vaccination coverage on girls to over 95%, as well as organizing awareness-raising campaigns. As a result, compared to that of 2019, vaccination coverage of the 12 kinds of vaccines being given in the central region has increased by 3.5% in 2020. The number of pregnant women vaccinated against tetanus has increased by 2.5% of that 99.5% of the newly born were born of vaccinated mothers. Stating that the rate of delivery service at health institutions has increased by 80%, Mr. Hurry Oldemichael, coordinator of fertility program at the Ministry of Health region branch, said that delivery service has grown by 10% compared to that of 2019. Sister Leta Brahan and Meskel, coordinator of students' health program, said that with the resumption of education, health professionals as well as over 500 teachers that were provided with training on the prevention of COVID-19 have been deployed to schools with a view of ensuring students' health. Social service provision institutions put in place in photo semi-urban centers contributing in villages regrouping. The substantial investment made to put in place educational and health facilities as well as transportation, potable water and electricity power services is dramatically contributing in facilitating the daily lives of the residents and thereby improving their livelihoods. Stating that the asphalt road linking Masawa Foro and Ad uh, Foro Dead Road are contributing and facilitating social economic activities, the residents call for the maintenance of the roads in some areas that are damaged due to flooding and for allotment of land for construction of residential houses. According to Mr. Zer Esguina Mariam, head of social service in the subzone, the number of schools in Foro Semi Urban Center has increased from one to six, and the residents have become beneficiaries of mobile telephone service. Foro Semi Urban Center is located 46 kilometers south of the poor city of Masawa and is resident to about 800 families. The National Voluntary Blood Donors Association indicates that it is working to enrich the National Blood Transfusion Center and blood supply to health center through strengthening organizational capacity. Pointing out that the main objective of the association is to increase the understanding of the public on the importance of voluntary blood donation in saving lives, Mr. Berhat Mosazgi, secretary of the association, said that the association has been actively working to organize and strengthen branch offices across the country as well as to increase the number of voluntary blood donors. According to Mr. Gabriel Yonas, Gabriel Tensai, head of organization of the association, currently there are 53 groups comprising staff members of line ministries, public institutions, and national associations, 33 groups comprising benevolent individuals, as well as 13 voluntary family groups. Mr. Gabriel Yonas also said that in 2020, over 11,100 bags of blood have been voluntarily donated, and that attests to the progress the association is making and in terms of increasing the number of voluntary blood donors. Stating that the COVID-19 pandemic has been the main challenge in the progress and active activity of the association, and with that, the award association was not able to reach the main customers, including students and other members of the society. Now I'm back with international news after a short break. <laughs> Welcome back. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases globally surpassed 131 million today, with the death toll exceeding 2.8 million. And the number of recovered patients has exceeded 105 million. This is according to data from World Meters. 
The United States has surpassed 31.3 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 today. Brazil surpassed 12.9 million cases, and India has recorded nearly 12.4 million cases, respectively. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention updated it to say fully vaccinated people can within they can travel within the U.S. without getting tested for the coronavirus or going into quarantine afterwards. Previously, the agency had against unnecessary travel even for vaccinated people, but not that it would update its guidance as more people got vaccinated and evidence mounted about the protection the shots provide. According to the CDC, nearly 100 million people in the U.S., or about 30 percent of the population, have received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. The Netherlands has stopped administrating Oxtro, rather Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccinations until April 7. Yesterday, the Dutch Health Ministry said it will temporarily stop inoculations for people below the age of 60. But after walks today, rather talks today, health departments decided to suspend all AstraZeneca jabs to avoid waste. The United States has confirmed it will take part in a meeting in Vienna next week on the Iran nuclear deal and said it was open to sit down directly with Tehran. The European Union announced yesterday the in-person meeting of all parties to the 2015 nuclear deal formerly known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, from which former President Donald Trump in 2018 and instead imposing a maximum pressure sanctions campaign. The European party to the court said they would have separate contacts in Vienna with the United States and Iran, which has already rejected a direct meeting with the U.S. with the European diplomats saying Iran and the U.S. will be in the same town, but not in the same room. Still, the presence of the U.S. in Iran and the Austrian capital represents a step forward in bringing all sides back to the agreement. While Biden has made returning to the deal a priority since taking office, Iran and the U.S. have been holding pattern since he took office in January, with Tehran saying Washington should first remove sanctions before negotiations can start, and Washington saying Tehran must first return to compliance with the agreement before sanctions can be lifted. The Kremlin said that any deployment of NATO troops to Ukraine would lead to further tensions near Russian's borders and force Moscow to take extra measures to ensure its own security. NATO voiced concern on Thursday over what is said was a big Russian military buildup near eastern Ukraine after Russia warned that a serious escalation in the conflict in Ukraine's Donbass region could destroy Ukraine. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Puskov said that the situation at the contact line in eastern Ukraine between Ukrainian government forces and Russian-backed separate forces was quite frightening and that multiple provocations were taking place there. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke with his Ukrainian counterpart and condemned recent escalations of Russia provocative actions in eastern Ukraine. This is according to the Pentagon. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.